You know, even with it crushed all the way down to three square wave channels, that theme song to loop in the third part two is still pretty good. And for the first licensed game on the Super Cassette Vision, Loop on the Third is pretty interesting. Loop on the Third is one of those pop culture mainstays in Japan, a thief with a heart of gold who is relentlessly pursued around the world by Interpol's Inspector Zenigata. When this game was released either early in 1985 or very late in 1984, no one is exactly sure when, a third Lupin television series was underway though the game uses the theme from the second series that ran in the late 70s. This Super Cassette Vision game is actually Lupin's first console game. Not quite his first video game, though. His first electronic game was an LCD handheld in the style of a Game & Watch, and the game Cliffhanger, which was a Laserdisc game similar to Dragon's Lair, was made out of chopped up bits of two Lupin movies. But still, this was the first time that a kid could play as Lupin on a TV screen in their home. And that has to count for something. In Epoch's Lupin III, Lupin has just pulled off a big bank heist in Barcelona, and now he's escaping through underground tunnels. There are four stages that you go through before the game starts to loop. And the first three have the same basic principles, though the obstacles you'll face are very different. Your goal is to make it to the far right-hand side of the stage, and you have a little progress bar at the bottom showing how you're doing. You're being pursued on these stages by some kind of enemy. On the first stage, it's an alligator chasing you down. On the second and third stages, you're being hounded by the police. If your pursuer catches up to you, then you're busted. The alligator doesn't move especially fast, but the cops are really quick. They move at the exact same pace that Lupin does. So if you slow down for any reason, and many things that you do will make you slow down, they'll be on top of you in seconds. For Lupin, the left button punches and the right button jumps. You can also duck by pressing down, and Lupin can do a crouch walk if you use the diagonals. The jumping is always the same distance. This is in the style of an early arcade game, or perhaps more precisely, in the style of an early computer game. And so you have no air control, you just hit the button and you move that distance in a predetermined arc. One more trick with the jumping, when you land, you stop for a moment. Which means if you're being chased by the police, they're catching up every time you jump. A consistent enemy across the stages are bats that will fly at you at various levels. On the amateur difficulty, where you have eight lives, the bats travel in a straight path. But on professional, where you only have four lives, the bats will go up and down. You can punch out the bats, or you could avoid them, and the bats can go really close to Lupin's head without it affecting him. Contact with the bats, and, well, anything else that looks even remotely hostile, will cause Lupin to get captured. On the first and second stages, the police on the surface will drop things down to try to trip you up. On the first stage, it's just rolling logs, sticks of dynamite, well, something. Either way, you have to jump over it. In the caverns area, the police drop some form of bouncing ball. The other common obstacles are pits and rocks that you could trip over. Which bring me to the game that might be the biggest influence on Lupin the Third, though maybe not immediately obvious. This is kind of similar to Spelunker, the platformer that debuted on computers in the early 80s, and it became a smash hit in Japan, even though the character was so fragile that he could die to bat poop or tripping over a rock. And Lupin the Third is similarly difficult. You're going to die, or at least be captured, a lot as you play. This is a brutally punishing game. There's a few more things that can get in your way. On the jungle stage, snakes will come down from the ceiling and completely block off the path. Unlike the bats, their hitbox is actually slightly larger than it appears. Also on the jungle, turtles will pop out of the ground and slowly walk towards you. You'll just have to jump over them. And on the cavern stage, you'll encounter springboards that you have to jump onto in order to get over big rocks. Lubin does have one trick up his sleeve to deal with his pursuers. He'll spot bombs dangling from the ceiling, and he can drop those by jumping into them. If the explosion hits whatever is chasing him, it gets sent way back. But at least for the cops, 
It's possible that they can be so close to you that they won't get hit by the explosion. You'll also spot jewels hanging from the ceiling, and you can jump up to those for extra points. Lupin the Third has one significant problem as a game. It's random. All of the obstacles ahead of you are randomly generated. In fact, it's not uncommon for the end of the stage to interrupt you passing through an obstacle. But because the obstacles are randomized, it's very easy for them to appear in a way that's impossible to avoid. It's actually harder on the earlier stages for this. For the first stage or two, you'll encounter slow-moving obstacles where you have to just stop and wait for them to get into a position where you can avoid them. And that means letting that constant time pressure enemy behind you catch up. If you have to sit there for five seconds as a snake slowly goes down, and then slowly goes up just enough for you to pass underneath it, then the cop behind you is already caught up. And that's not even factoring in things like multiple things that can hit you appearing at different heights, or requiring you to jump over an obstacle and into another one. You're going to encounter a lot of no-win situations as you play Loop in the Third. And that's why I don't have any footage of the fourth stage. I played this game for an hour and I couldn't get there. When you're captured, you're sent back to the start of that stage, so you'll have to do it all over again. And every stage is about a two-minute long run. That's a lot of time for things to go wrong. That final stage has you locked into a single-screen room as a wall closes in on you, and you have to shoot some moving targets to get out. I find Lupin the Third to be a little bit of an odd game. This feels a lot like an arcade game from about 1981. Right when people started adding scrolling to games, well, they still didn't have it quite down yet, and they just threw lots of stuff at players that had basic patterns, hoping to overwhelm them with sheer numbers. However, I think that simplicity works in the game's favor. You've got a handful of elements and tools to mitigate them. You always have pressure from the left, but you can slow that down with bombs. You always have things approaching from the right, but there, your more direct tools of punching and jumping help out. It probably could have used another couple of passes to refine it a little bit better, but this isn't bad. The big catch for Epoch was that in 1985, it was the very last moments that this kind of game was acceptable to consumers. Deeper, more complex games were appearing on the competing consoles, and it feels a bit backwards compared to them.